Calvinists teach that God chooses who will be saved and who will be lost. They believe God has chosen who he wants to go to heaven and chosen who he wants to go to hell. Calvinists teach you have to be one of the elect to be saved. They believe God chose the elect from the foundation of the world. They also believe the election is unconditional and that you don't have any free will in the matter. But 1 Peter 1 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God. God sees who, through his foreknowledge, who's going to be elect. He knows who's going to be saved and who's going to be lost. It isn't that he chooses who's going to be saved and chooses who's going to be lost. It's that he knows everything and he knows who's going to accept Jesus Christ and who's going to reject Jesus Christ. And you're not one of the elect until you get in Jesus Christ. If you ask a Calvinist, when were you put in Jesus Christ? They would say, before the foundation of the world. And they would take you to verses like Ephesians 1.4 which says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This doesn't work because notice the verse said, chosen us in him before the foundation of the world him being jesus christ you're not chosen until you actually get in jesus christ you don't get in jesus christ until you believe the gospel of first corinthians 15 1 through 4 galatians 3 26 and 27 says for you all for ye are all the children of god by faith in christ jesus for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You are put into the body of Christ the moment you believe the gospel. Those who are in Christ are predestinated to go to heaven. You aren't predestinated until you get in Jesus Christ. By teaching that God chooses who goes to heaven, they also teach he chooses who goes to hell. And this is contrary to scripture because verses like 1 Timothy 2, 4 says who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 6 says who gave himself a ransom for all. Jesus Christ gave himself a ransom for all. 2 Peter 3, 9 says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If God wants all to come to repentance and has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, then why would he damn people to hell? Unless every baby who died were the elect, they would also go to hell according to a Cal the Calvinist teaching. Every baby would have to be elect that dies for them not to go to hell. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Acts 10.43 says, To him gave all the prophets witness, that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall, have rem shall receive remission of sins. God is a whosoever God. Whosoever chooses to get in Jesus Christ will be put in Jesus Christ by their faith in his finished work. God will also let whosoever wants to, he'll let them deny him. Whosoever wants to deny Jesus Christ has the freedom to do it. 1 John 2, 22 and 23 says, Who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is any Christ that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. And God, God lets whosoever wants to do this, he lets them do it. God doesn't want robots, and that is why he gave Adam a choice of good and evil. And Adam and Eve broke this commandment in Genesis chapter 3. And verses like Romans 9, 1 through 4. Paul says he is willing to be accursed if his kinsmen according to the flesh would get saved. And if these Jews were already damned, then why would Paul wish himself accursed? If God has already determined that all of these people who aren't saved are not going to get saved, then why would Paul wish himself accursed? It would be pointless. 
If some are damned to hell without a choice, then why would Jesus Christ have died for all sins? 1 John 2.2 2 says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 2 Peter 2.1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Notice how Jesus Christ bought these false prophets and teachers, yet they willingly denied the payment, and they brought upon themselves swift destruction. Not God. God didn't make them do it. They brought it up on themselves, and they denied themselves. Why would Jesus Christ only die for a chosen few and damn millions of people who are willing to be saved? This is such a false teaching according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ died for every man, woman, boy, and girl. Hebrews 2.9 says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Not just a chosen few, but every man. There have been people who believe in Calvinism that believe they can't be saved because they aren't elect. And this is a lie from the devil because if you notice verses like John 6.37, it says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Do you think Jesus Christ, who died for the sins of the whole world, is going to turn down a lost sinner when they're coming to him, wanting to be saved? A Calvinist said one time, If I have free will, then why can't I quit sinning? Even after salvation, you will continue to sin because of your sin nature. Your flesh doesn't get born again when you get born again. It is still sinful. But the truth is that every sin you commit is done by your own free will. Every sin that you're going to commit today, tomorrow, this week, you're going to choose to do it. You chose to drink a beer. You chose to cuss. You chose to fornicate. God never made you sin. You chose to do so. And the Bible even says there's no temptation taking you that you're not able to bear and God could get, will give you a way to escape. You don't have to do any of the sins you commit. You choose to do so. Yeah, you're probably going to sin because you're sin nature. We still have a the sinful flesh. And if we don't walk in the spirit, we're going to just continue to give in to the lusts of the flesh. God knows all. He knows who is going to go to hell and who isn't going to hell. He tells you that you will go to hell if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. He sees through his foreknowledge who's going to accept and who's going to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He also gives you a way out so that you don't have to go to hell, and it is up for you to up to you to receive it. Colossians 2 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. God told you the consequence of rejecting him, and he is giving you a way out. A good illustration is a story about David in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 23 11 through 13. It says, Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah, and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbear to go forth. So God told David the men of Keilah would deliver him into the hands of Saul. David of his own free will chose not to go to Keilah. God told you, told you that if you reject the gospel, you will go to hell. You choose by your own free will to accept the gospel 
and go to heaven. Just like David chose of his own free, free will not to go to Keilah and not be delivered into the hands of Saul. And another thing, you're not predestinated until you get in Jesus Christ. And when the Bible talks about predestination, it is never predestination to salvation. We are predestinated to be adopted as His children once we are in Jesus Christ. As Ephesians 1.5 says, Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. The pre predestination wasn't to salvation. We are also predestinated to obtain an inheritance. Ephesians 1.11 says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. This isn't predestination to salvation, and we don't even inherit salvation because it is a free gift. And the free gift is offered to every man. And the Bible tells you the gospel that you need to believe in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. The gospel is simply Jesus Christ died, He died for you, He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died by shedding His blood. If you will believe this gospel, rely on this gospel to get you to heaven, then you can be saved and not have to worry about being under the wrath of God. God doesn't choose who he will save and choose who he will, who he will damn. He gives everyone free will. So if you're not saved and you want to be saved, come to him today as a guilty sinner and believe the gospel.